give you a brief introduction. Uh, what uh, did it really happen in the last 20 years? Uh, the almost 177 percent of the pill, uh, actually the world pill, uh, has increased. So actually, the, the global richness has increased a lot. And this is why it happened because, uh, especially thanks to of the, that the economy itself become more and more interconnected thanks to technology and thanks also to fintechs. At the same time, so we have actually a huge problem that the modern society, and I tell you everywhere from Mexico, Europe, uh, Georgia, everywhere, has actually a huge problem that uh, people come out from schools uh, without the, no financial knowledge about anything. Really, and uh, I can tell you here in Italy is a disaster. So people has no idea what is uh, how a credit work, how an investment work, and that leads actually to have a society that is pretty scared of financial instrument, and people are pretty scared of banks. And there is also another level of society that said, "Oh, okay, let's go to Bitcoin." That seems uh, is going to change all that everything back that it was it was it is considered as bad but it's not really like that so what's what's the point nowadays we have some huge financial instruments that are extremely powerful like credit investment insurance payments that can really help to change the life of people the problem the people they don't know how to use them because they are pretty scared and if you try to use a credit in a bad way you can find yourself seriously in trouble or if you try to do some trading with something that you really don't understand you are really seriously in trouble because you can lose your money and this actually happens especially with bitcoin so be careful money has a really huge emotional impact in the life of people and not only due to the fact that there is a perceived complexity of the subject what does fintech do essentially they make the things simpler for the customers uh, providing uh, new instruments new technologies new mobile app uh, that helps uh, society to deal with the financial instruments in a much simpler way and this is uh, what actually i'm providing so i'm trying to give uh, a financial instrument that is credit uh, using uh, open banking and also using artificial intelligence. Just to give you actually an example of what actually I'm doing. I mean, one of the pain points nowadays, for instance, of the bank is that the conservative lending has been one of the most flowed processes, both from bank, but also from customer perspective. If you think uh, when, when you go actually to a bank and ask for, uh, for a credit, you have to sign a lot of paper. You have to go through actually a huge onboarding process, an account money laundering process and so forth. And uh, there is actually a huge underperforming waiting time to get a bank approval that can go between five and 10 days. On the other side, the banks have uh, at the same time a lot of manual time consuming, acti consuming activities. They have to check what they are doing and so forth. But the, wor the worst problem is that uh, the, there are nowadays a huge conservative risk models. What does it mean? That uh, if you are going to ask for a credit, uh, and a credit, guys, is something is a life changer. It can help you really to uh, achieve things that you couldn't achieve in normal condition. The bank is going to check uh, for conservative data, for data that used to work uh, once upon a time, but not more nowadays. And especially, society has changed nowadays. If you think of me, for myself, I changed country three times. I lived uh, in London, in uh, Germany, in uh, Mexico, and, and now I'm back in Italy, but can you imagine for me taking here a credit is impossible because I don't have a credit history here in, in my country, especially for digital nomads. It doesn't work at this concept, no, at all. So rather than uh, um, bureau, credit bureaus are checking your uh, credit histories on, uh, uh, or your history actually of uh, financing. But if you don't have any history of financing, how do they work actually? They just take your social demographic data and they just clustering you in a, with a specific, uh, in a specific group with a level. So if you're lucky enough to be in the right group based on your social demographic data, then you will have a high score. But if you have essentially bad, <laughs> let's say, you have the luck to get inside one of these cluster of with a low rate score just by your social demographic data, you essentially you don't get a credit. And this is extremely unfair. It's not even inclusive. 
So it happened that a, a white male guy, maybe, like me, maybe it gets a credit, but someone else uh, with an, in a, of uh, another color, it doesn't get the credit. And uh, this is uh, totally unfair. It is injustice. So it's really wrong the concept of inclusion of uh, conservative risk model. So my plan is essentially to do this, to democratize the access to credit. How? Building the most innovative credit score and make it accessible for customer banks and fintech and financial institutions in Europe and in Australia. I say the Europe and Australia because essentially they do have open banking. I hope Georgia will have open banking sooner or later. So I will provide uh, this uh, B2B service also in, in Georgia, hopefully. How do we democratize uh, the access to credit? Essentially, my platform borns as a B2B platform for consumer credit information. I use open banking data as a data source, and I use machine learning and artificial intelligence to estimate the consumer credit score. Why open banking? With open banking, I check on a very detailed level the transaction of your bank account. And from the transactions, I can learn everything about you. I can learn if you are married, if you are divorced, if you have pay elements, if you have a job, if you don't have a job, if uh, you have you are long-term job, you're, you have been just uh, I know, in an internship, you just started. I can check essentially your cash flow. You know, I can understand a lot of your life. And this for me is much more important than anything else because uh, if you have liquidity to pay, let's say, I mean, alone, I, I can provide it to you because I can bear the risk, regardless where you are from. So this is a uh, terms of uh, fairness. So be fair and be inclusive. For more, moreover, the fair AI platform handles, the, as, it, as it's written here, handles the whole life cycle of a loan, enabling banks to access the instant lending market with a single API. So my plan is essentially, I went to a bank in Italy, said, oh, this is the plan. I would like to do this. They say, oh, really nice. But uh, you know what, we would like that you integrate this in our banking platform. And so they said, well, before doing this, I mean, it's fine, but they prefer to do then a B2B platform where they essentially can use to integrate it to any kind of financial institution that have a credit. I am not a financial institution. I'm kind of a credit intermediary that uh, is creating a new credit score, more fair and more. This is just to give an idea. Uh, I open a parenthesis. I, my company will release a, a, an app, a mobile app, that will allow the user essentially to do account aggregation. So to connect an account, I mean, their bank account. And once the account is aggregated, I will be able, actually, fair, we'll be able to get the transactions. You know, and the transaction therefore will be estimated inside and uh, with the machine learning technology. And I will ex tell you a bit later more about this. Uh, this machine learning technology will provide uh, a new form of credit scoring to the bank. The bank itself, and uh, for everyone who's technical, I can explain maybe later on Slack, uh, has a, a component, a, a connector deployed within the infrastructure that talks directly with their, their core bank system. And this allows uh, to do an instant loan approval, but also an instant disbursement of the loan directly into the customer's account. The cast, the account that has been connected to open banking. So the idea is to reduce uh, the process of getting a loan from five or 10 days to seconds, you know, this is the other value. And it's something, let's say, uh, pretty, pretty unique, you know, in, in, this, uh, in, in this scenario. So as I said, we collect the data, we analyze the data and we empower the data. And uh, be very aware that this process does not only apply to credit. If you guys want to open a new, you know, uh, financial service that work on open banking, you can do, you know, I it really give you an idea. You can uh, uh, let the user aggregate the data through open banking and then create on top of transactional data, a new financial product that can be investment, that can be insurance, you know? It's, uh, I mean, the, the possibility you can create a service uh, of added value on top of transaction data that uh, can be of many forms. So it's really creating new opportunities, even through for uh, entrepreneurs, so let's put it this way. 
So just to talk because actually this is a data fest uh, and I would like to talk a bit about uh, the our machine learning model. Unfortunately, actually the time is not that much, but we, we try to be faster. So we gather open banking data. Then we go through a categorization model through a supervised engine. We have a beautiful here, a neural network here that does some categorization and some classification. Then we do, we have a prediction model uh, to do, we do essentially linear regression to do some forecasting and profiling in order to profile the customer behaviors. And we take out uh, some KPIs. So, so I mean, almost like 50 K performance indicators uh, of the customer financial status that are clustered into incomes, expenses, uh, averages, and so forth. Based on all these KPIs, we take out a risk score that is a average synthesis models of the old KPIs. And this risk score is, can be many forms. Generally, is a third letter grade. So triple A, triple B, triple C, or double A, double C, and so forth. So what actually my company is providing is a credit score as a service. We offer also a white label instant lending solution and the app I was telling you about before called the Cream. That is this one. So essentially, is a cream lending mobile app that is used for requesting and disbursing instant microcredit, where actually you can, through a gimmick of the product, to revert and refinance a customer bank transaction. So it's like a Klarna, but not for card transaction, for bank transactions. So you select a transaction that you have done in the past, like you bought a television, maybe a very expensive television, or you have made a very long trip from Georgia to, uh, to Europe uh, and you paid some money, you want to refinance the, this money back and then you select it, you, even, you could even swipe right and uh, you select the plans of repayment and you get the money back. So uh, extremely fast approach of getting a credit. What actually, how we differentiate from competitors is that this uh, credit score service, as I explained, it, it works from alternative source of data, so open banking and impacts uh, inclusivity and uh, rejection rate. We build more than 50 plus different uh, financial KPIs. Uh, this is a real subject for uh, data scientists because we actually we have a team of five, more than five data scientists in my, in my company. And uh, well, the good thing is that because the user allow to give the uh, ownership of their data to some other services, we allow actually banks to disburse credit to customers of other banks. This actually is an added value for our banking partners. This is actually is a bit of our white label instant lending solution where, uh, I mean, most of what I explained it. The only problem, guys, is that uh, we do really need an active PSD2 gateway that allow us to connect to different banks. And as I said, I hope in Georgia, it, it, it will, they will uh, get very soon this paradigm. As I say, that we have this uh, modular backend platform that with uh, this, uh, as I say, machine learning core. Um, again, yeah, we'll be a bit faster here because uh, it's uh, something that I repeated so far. But the credit automation, uh, especially in the app, is this one. So we disburse some credit reverting a customer bank settlement back to liquidity. So the user connects his own bank account through PSD2 and the browser financial history and select the bank settlement. Then the users choose the plan for the federal payments because this is a credit. If you have a financial pro investment product, you could actually even at this point create uh, through machine learning a whole portfolio of investment tailored and specialized for the user. And in this case, actually call local credit institution refinance it immediately back into the customer bank account. So this is actually what uh, the open banking and PSD2, PSD2 gives uh, to the customer, the possibility to read from the, their bank account, but also to execute payments. So I can put money in your bank account, I can get the money from your bank account. And this is especially useful for debt recollection. You know, in a moment, actually, I need actually to get back the money that I, I landed you. Uh, you select the bank settlement, you select the re repayment rate, and also there is a way, the commission actually here is very high, don't worry, it will be much less in, in real. And then, uh, you just back, uh, you just take the money back. For, for instance, this is one uh, on how we integrate uh, our project into a partner. And uh, this is actually the part of the risk score as a service. And this is uh, a bit more complicated about instead of the, uh, our credit automation as a service. So in the moment when actually we want to disburse 
our credit and we have a direct connector to uh, one of our banking partners. What I want to show you very quickly is one of uh, our KPIs because this is, as I said, this is a data test. So here we have uh, some uh, of the credit risk evaluation based on the personal KPIs based on transactions that are clustered, for instance, into balance, incomes, expenses, savings ratio. And this is only half of the one that we provide. And mostly actually are statistical mathematical models that we use for uh, average balances, uh, monthly debts, monthly credit card, planned savings and support. But we have also something more heuristic uh, like a cash flow volatility index, uh, time distribution coefficient, income expenses flows, uh, liquidity tension index, uh, turnover rate. So actually we check the volatility, for instance, in, a, in your bank account. We check if you are spending your salary very fast or if it goes until the end of the month. It's actually, my team of data scientists is getting pretty excited to do these things. And uh, well, I'm, I'm tech myself, so actually I like this stuff as well. And at the end, we provide a letter grade score, grade score. so triple A, triple B, triple C, and, and so forth. So this is the disclaimer. What we do, account aggregation, transaction analysis, smart insight forecasting with machine learning, credit scoring, full digital lending request, and instant loan approval and disbursement. <laughs>